there are few experiences quite as liberating as cruising the open road. With the spinning tires beneath, answering to your every command, the countryside is at your beck and call. Freedom at your fingertips. Exploration, independence, only a pedal push away. A man's innate desire satisfied. Few of us get to enjoy such adventures often, but for a lucky bunch of tough, hard-driven road warriors, these thrills are accessible every day, and we depend upon them to deliver our goods and keep this country running. These patriots are the American truckers. Diamonds on the windshield as heaven starts to cry And in his rearview mirror his angel waves goodbye She knows he's gonna go she knows he's one of them Brothers of the highway Children of the wind That Detroit diesel fired ship Goes blowing out again Selling toward the setting sun Freedom's their best friend Brothers of the highway Children of the wind In the 1970s, another set of patriots were working on getting their cargo to another world. With the race to the moon won, NASA turned its sights on its next destination, Mars. However, public interest in space was waning. A struggling economy and an escalating war in Vietnam dominated the political sphere and put NASA low on the American priority list. A trip to Mars was thought too costly, too ambitious, and unimportant. Plans to visit the Red Planet were scrapped. However, the Cold War stubbornly lingered on, and the peril of nuclear annihilation was an ever-present threat. The Soviets and the U.S. were now in competition to control a new arena, low Earth orbit. From the darkness of space, countless undetected menaces could be hurled upon the Earth by our inventive foes. So NASA and the U.S. military decided that domination of low Earth orbit would be priority one. But the rockets of old had been tossed in the junk heap, and NASA lacked a spacecraft capable of hauling the space hardware of new. NASA and the U.S. military needed a new kind of ship with a more practical set of capabilities. It had to be reusable to cut down on cost, be capable of lugging large amounts of goods into space, and deliver them to whatever orbit their fuel tanks could allow. And it needed to land on a runway, just like an airplane, with its precious freight stowed safely aboard. NASA needed a space truck. Like NASA in the 70s, in the early 1900s, the U.S. economy was in need of a new kind of cargo hauling. We were in the midst of the Industrial Revolution, and rail dominated the freight industry. But these steam-powered luggers were huge, expensive, and lacked the ability to maneuver the streets of our booming cities. A more practical and nimble machine was needed. Trucks were a promising solution, but at the time they were slow, cumbersome machines. They were weighed down with solid rubber tires, powered by inefficient engines, and took nearly a month to cross from one side of the U.S. to the other. But all of that changed as a result of World War I. World War I was the first modern war. The days of hauling the elements of war by horse and carriage were antiquated, and put one at tremendous disadvantage to a technically savvy enemy. As a result, engineers put their mentals towards developing a reliable, efficient battlefield truck. These new trucks rode on tires filled with air, had improved transmissions, 
and could haul more freight and troops than their inferior cousins. Then, in the 1930s, trucking exploded. As part of Franklin D. Roosevelt's New Deal, trucking monopolies were squashed and innovation by competition soared. New roads were built all across America, and truckers began to overtake the railway tycoons as a prime mover of goods. The final dagger to the railway business was the construction of the interstate highway system, authorized by the Federal Aid Highway Act of 1956. Trucks now had a system of reliable, wide, high-speed concrete roads crisscrossing the country, and trucks came to dominate the industry. In 2019, three and a half million truckers drove our roads, delivering 10 and a half billion tons of freight to destinations all over the country. The job is an irreplaceable, unoutsourceable keystone of the American economy. It is the most common occupation in 29 states, accounting for some $160 billion worth of much needed wages every year. Today still, 71% of all freight tonnage moves on the back of trucks. The next closest transportation system, rail, now accounts for only 6%. On April 12, 1981, after a decade of development, rigorous design, and testing, NASA's first space truck sat on the launch pad at Kennedy Space Center. She was called the Columbia, named after the first American vessel to circumnavigate the globe. The Columbia was a space shuttle and part of NASA's new space transportation system. She was lofted into space on the back of a huge orange fuel tank powered by two 150-foot-tall solid rocket boosters and three rear-mounted RS-25 liquid hydrogen engines, each capable of 420,000 pounds of thrust. On her maiden flight, NASA astronauts John Young and Robert Crippen successfully navigated the atmosphere, space, and then re-entry to touch down at Edwards Air Force Base. The mission took two and a half days. By all important metrics, the shuttle had proven herself space-worthy. A new era in spaceflight had begun. Four other space shuttles were built. The Challenger, Discovery, Endeavour, and Atlantis. Like the terrestrial big rigs of Earth, the shuttle proved her mettle as an impressive delivery system. The space shuttle could carry seven astronauts and a school bus to space. Within her two 60-foot-long cargo bay doors, she was capable of hauling up to 63,000 pounds of freight into low Earth orbit. And unlike other spacecraft, the shuttle could bring 31,000 pounds of cargo safely back to the Earth. During the lifetime of the program, the space shuttle and the space truckers who piloted her flew a total of 135 missions over a period of three decades. 355 astronauts flew on her flight deck, 306 men and 49 women from 16 different countries. The shuttle took the Hubble telescope to space and then repaired it, delivered numerous military, science, and communication satellites to orbit, launched three interplanetary science missions to Venus, Jupiter, and then the Sun, flew service missions to the Russian Mir habitat, and then just to top it all off, built the International Space Station. In total, 52 components and satellites were hauled to space on the back of the shuttle. But the shuttle was not without her flaws. Space travel, like truck driving, is a risky undertaking. Two of the 135 missions ended in disaster, with total loss of the crew. On January 28, 1986, Space Shuttle Challenger disintegrated after launch as a result of a faulty rocket booster. The foundations of NASA shook as the public mourned the loss of the crew and support for the shuttle program waned. As a result, 
unprecedented safety reviews, and rigorous re-engineering was integrated into the program to avoid future catastrophe. But these precautions led to tremendous cost overruns and slowed the reusability of the spacecraft, hindering two of the key initial objectives, low cost and rapid reusability. The shuttle did go on to fly 55 successive missions, but despite their best efforts, NASA could not prevent the loss of the shuttle Columbia in February of 2003. The Columbia had unknowingly lost part of her protective heat shield during launch and broke up during re-entry when superheated plasma penetrated her wing, burning her up from the inside out. This was the final straw for the shuttle. The public and Congress grew weary of further loss and eventually canceled the shuttle program altogether. The last launch of the space shuttle was on the 8th of July, 2011. Today, the four remaining shuttles are shells of their former selves, reduced to nothing more than museum attractions. Spectacular as these attractions may be, they showcase the end of an era. America had lost its space truck. Without truckers and the incredible machines they drive, the American economy would come to a standstill. Our modern cities, our factories, our infrastructure was built and expanded off the backs of trucks, and America thusly boomed. But with the loss of the space shuttle, America's human space program grew stale, and no astronaut was launched from U.S. soil for nine years. Today, there are still no spacecraft that can hold a candle to the capabilities that the shuttle once championed. The shuttle could haul cargo, service satellites, and construct space stations. She could launch interplanetary missions, bring crew to the ISS, capture enemy spacecraft, and act as a base for astronauts during spacewalks. The space shuttle left behind a mixed legacy, paving the way for our permanent presence in space while reminding us of our mortality. New technologies are on the horizon and will increase our foothold in the great void beyond. But as we look towards our future, let us not forget the great Americans who drove the highways of the earth and those of the cosmos to get us to where we are today. Denver, Baton Rouge, east of Pittsburgh, Portland, South, San Diego, say hello, say hello. Tallahassee, north to Boston, up to Bangor, west to Austin, coast to coast, sea to sea, say hello, say hello. You brothers of the highway, oh, yeah, bro. children of the wind, Sing it to the sun.